This rocket was never completed by the Germans as a complete rocket. It was made by the British. The V-2 was always intended to be an instructional airframe. So what they've basically done is, is turned up where these were being built and picked all the, the good components that they wanted and then it was assembled using German scientists to get them back together again and make a few of them operational. There's about 19 rockets on the planet. The War Memorial didn't get the rocket until 1957 and the rocket was actually dragged around Australia to, and it was basically shown at air shows. When they were doing that, they actually broke its back. And so they put it on the Miller wagon and fixed it up so it looked straight and, and presentable. The main problem was that the object is made from mild steel and so it rusted very, very easily and wasn't intended to last, you know, 60, 80, 100 years. And by 1957, it was pretty well toast on the inside due to corrosion. So it gave us an opportunity to repair all that and, and consolidate it and make it stable. Ainsley and I basically started this in August 2020. The first thing was to do some research on it to find out actually how it came apart. And I, I had never pulled one apart before, and it's the only one that's in the Southern Hemisphere. We followed a document written in England about how they come apart, looked at many old films and things like that so you could determine where the parting lines were. When we first started this object, um, you can't get access to it. But the, the good thing about it was the fact that it was that badly corroded, we could stick our hands in there to reach the bolts to undo them to um, so we could get the, the centre section apart. And on this object, you can see it sitting on the Mueller wagon. Where it actually sits on the Mueller wagon is where the parting lines are, where it comes apart. We weren't sure how structurally sound it was, so we actually pulled piece by piece off on the Mueller wagon, used the Mueller wagon as a support to keep it all safe and straight and so we didn't damage too much of it. So it, it's quite integral part of the rocket and it needs to be very, very strong to support the rest of it. So that was the, the dilemma that we, we had with it. We had to make a lot of components to add to it. We made a couple of hundred metres of longerons. We used about 13,000 rivets. We drilled 30,000 holes. We <laughs> used 24 panels. We also had to get some bulkheads manufactured to help us repair those bits and then put it all back together. So as the V2 evolved, it had different schemes that they would use. So there was one where it was black and white. So when it went launched, they could actually watch it and the trajectory, how it would move. And then they started going more camo, which was called splinter, which was like different shades of aggressive green and browns. And then when it came here, after the wrap had it, it was white and yellow, which would not be very useful in wartime, very obvious. It was on a rotating spit stand so we had to rotate clean it rotate clean it so the preparation is really key so if you don't prep properly the paint's just going to fall off but this was one of the german colors that they had which was a green and then had black splodges in it so we had, to, we had to paint it green and then come back with just black spray paint and spray paint weird shapes on it and sort of then blend those edges out to create the camo that section there is exactly how um, it was made during uh, world war ii It's exciting to see an end of a really large project. The few conservators that have worked on it, there's probably been four or five of us in total. It was a fairly long job and it lasted a bit, a bit over two and a half years. It's, it's been a little bit over 6,000 hours to get it to the point that you see it in now. It's the only one in the Southern Hemisphere, so um, we're very lucky at the War Memorial to work on these objects. A lot of this hasn't been touched since the British and the Germans, and you can see all like the little markings and the details and everything. We see original markings, we want to leave those for the public so they can actually visualise and see exactly what it was. Like we're trying to create a bigger picture and where we have to intervene, we have to intervene for stability and 
that sort of thing, but it's really important to still have that personal element because it's about the stories, not only of who used it, but also who made these things. There's, there's a human thing attached to this object as well, and sometimes you forget about that, but it's very important.